In this video, we're going to take a look at solving quadratic inequalities. And before I start this, hopefully that you have some background information with working with inequalities and that you can recognize that if your original um, inequality is greater than or equal to or greater than, then you know that you're dealing with an or inequality. And if you are working with less than or equal to or less than, then you're dealing with an and inequality. So I'm kind of hoping that that background information is there. So um, first I'm going to take this first example, I'm going to solve it, solve it algebraically, kind of place it on a number line, take a look at what we really have, and then we'll write our answer in interval notation, and then we'll verify it by looking at a rough little sketch of this quadratic. So first of all, I've got a quadratic here. It's greater than zero. So ultimately, I need to find out, well, where is this um, quadratic greater than zero? That's my ultimate goal. I've got a gray tor. All right, so then that means this is an or inequality. So the first thing algebraically I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and I'm going to attempt to uh, factor it to solve it because that's probably going to be the easiest way. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and set it equal to 0. x squared plus 6x minus 16 equal to 0. Let's go ahead and see if this factors out. I can put an x and an x here, and it, with a negative 16 and a positive 6 there, it looks like we're going to be able to do a minus 2 and a plus 8. That's going to give me the negative 16 there. That'll give me the positive 6 in the middle. So, solving each one of these, x is going to be equal to 2, or x is going to be equal to a negative 8. Okay, now we do have to remember I just set this equal to 0 just so I could solve it so I'd know where to put my numbers. All right, but it's an or, okay, so really thinking of this on my number line, I'm going to have a negative 8 down here. I'm going to have a 2 right here. All right, so it's going to be greater than 2 or less than negative 8, okay? And with it being just a great or, great or, all right, then these would be uh, curvy brackets if you're using interval notation. They would be open circles if you're doing the open circle um, closed dot thing. So we would shade over here to the right of this, and then we would shade to the left. All right, and this sets up pretty nice as just a standard or inequality. All right, now if we take that and we look at it in terms of an um, interval notation, our solutions would come from a negative infinity all the way up to a negative 8. It would not include the negative 8. And then it would skip over and start at the 2, not including the 2, and then go all the way to infinity. All right, so there's our solution in interval notation. All right, now let's kind of verify this from a graphing standpoint. If I could look at this quadratic, all right, I know the zeros of the quadratic are a negative 8 and a 2. I can look at that leading coefficient and I can see it's a positive so it's going to be an upright um, quadratic. So I could do a really rough sketch. Alright, say negative 8 is over here and say 2 is right here. I know roughly that my quadratic is going to look like this. Alright, so the overall original inequality said, okay, where is this? quadratic greater than zero. All right, well, where is it above zero? Well, it's above zero over here, and it's above zero right here. All right, but it's not above zero specifically at two, because at two it's zero, and at negative eight it is zero. All right, so then this on our graph, verifying it graphically, corresponds to these two sections that we have just solved algebraically. So a couple different ways to look at it so that you can understand conceptually what's going on. All right, now let's come over here to the second example. All right, first thing you need to do here before you start solving anything is I would suggest moving everything to the left. You want this to have a zero on the right-hand side. So first step I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides of my equation. So I'm going to have an x squared minus 4x is less than or equal to zero. Okay, and looking at this inequality right here, less than or equal to, all right, I know it's going to be an and inequality, so that means all my solutions are going to come in the middle. Okay, so from here I can factor out an x. But you always are going to want to try factoring first, because if factoring works, that's probably going to be the easiest way to go. I would have an x left here minus a 4. Okay, and then over here I said equal to zero. You wouldn't necessarily have to. I could go ahead and just say less than or equal to zero. Okay, so 
on each of these, I'm going to get an x equals 0. I'm going to get an x equal to a 4. Okay, looking at this on a number line, okay, my 0 would be on the left, my 4 would be on the right, okay, and it's got the equal to part, all right, which means then these would be, if you're doing open and closed dots, it'd be a closed dot. If you're doing it more on lines of the interval notation, you'd have some square brackets here, and because it is an and, all those solutions would show up in the middle, okay? I can look at this then and come up with my answer in interval notation, which would just be square bracket 0 to 4. Okay, that being my answer in interval notation. All right, now again, if I wanted to take a look at this from a graphical standpoint, we could do a really rough sketch. All right, I know my roots are at 0 and 4. So well, there's 0, and then here's 4 right there. And again, looking at this, it's an upright parabola. So it would look something roughly like that. Okay, now up here, I was looking for where is this quadratic less than or equal to zero. So where is it less than or equal to zero? Where is it below the x-axis? Well, that would be in this section right here. So everything in between zero and four. And since it's less than or equal to, then it would be equal to zero equal to zero at zero. It would be equal to zero at four. So then that's why I would definitely include those points. So that's why we have the square brackets. So just a couple of examples there where we're looking at solving some quadratic inequalities and looking at it um, from an algebraic standpoint, putting that answer on interval notation and then verifying it from the graph. Definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.